Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome to another episode. In this episode I'll be playing I will be playing 24.2 version 24.2 of Kerbal Space Program. Um, right now I'm narrating over what I've previously recorded because right now I'm I'm testing out a new recording device called Action. And while the recording bit for the audio is a, a little bit tricky it, it kind of skips out here and there the recording for the actual video is way 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 better than the Camtasia recording the screen program Camtasia for some reason I don't know if it was the update or whatnot it likes to drop a buttload of frames and so the actual video comes out super choppy and it's very, very difficult and extraordinarily heart-wrenching to build or make uh, montage videos. So it's, it was due for a change. So I found this action. It's called Action. I'll have a link for it on the bottom for you if you want to check it out. It has a free trial version as well as the whole thing pretty much cost about 30 bucks and it look it works really really nice so far i'm not having any problems with it other than the audio which seems to cut out every now and then so i'm using camtasia's audio recorder to record over this uh, video all right so now 24.2 is obviously an update from their recently released 24.0 um i don't know exactly what they changed. I failed to read what it was that they changed, but uh, I do know that there are some things that I do have a problem with in version 24. Camera angles. It's uh, when you zoom out in map mode. I've noticed it does this. You zoom out or, or you're in map mode and you go ahead and uh, go back to the launch pad or whatever. The camera will be zoomed out all the way to its max point and you got to scroll the mouse wheel and zoom back in that's that's not a problem it's more of a nuisance than anything else but for us ssto ksp players we normally put our rocket engines and jet engines on individual action groups and when we hit spacebar that spacebar activates all the engines and then we just shut the ones down that we don't need such as rockets or whatever and then we go on from there Unfortunately, with this new update, the throttle is continuously in the middle. So you have to always remember to hit X to throttle everything down before you hit spacebar. If you hit spacebar, unfortunately, your rocket engines are going to ignite as well as your jet engines all at once. And of course, that's it wastes fuel and whatnot. And it's very, very, very annoying. I don't know if that's a bug or if it was some sort of design feature that they thought might be cool. But I really, really hope they get rid of it. If not, that's okay. I will have to just train myself to hit X every time I fly an SSTO. All right, so now, here we are. The very first rocket in our uh, career mode for 24.2. I think it was 23 when, when Kerbal Space Program came out with career mode. And what you do is you use a type of poor man staging by putting the solid fuel boosters on top of each other. When they run out, you activate the ones on top of them, which burns them up and blows them up. Act, 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 acting, like a, uh, acting like a staging, almost. You're not going to get into orbit, but you're going to get into a nice little suborbit. Now, unfortunately here, I tried to uh, maneuver Jebediah to put as much... Uh, samples and EVA reports actually there is no samples but EVA reports in the remaining capsules these capsules are used for extra torque for reaction wheel torque and unfortunately yeah <laughs> he uh, didn't quite make it but thankfully career mode is not this uber hard uh, forever permadeath type of thing so you could just hit exit and revert the launch which is really really nice so I like to pretend it's more of a training exercise where he's in some sort of holodeck or whatever the case may be so here we are trying again and this time I went ahead and added more Kerbals into the capsules that way I can just click on each individual capsule collect the data and store the data and I only need one guy to EVA out to the empty capsule and fill that up with information and data and stuff. I suppose I could have gone to the astronaut complex and got another 
astronaut, but yeah, who has time for that? So anyway, now we have three astronauts, or kerbonauts, on their way to space. Not orbit, just space. And it ended up being a really good success, although the landing was a little, a little to be desired of. Now I know some of you are wondering why I'm in point twenty-four point two, but it's only thirty-two bit. Is because for some reason the sixty-four bit was having a lot of instability issues. Like if you went from VAB into research or went from VAB onto the launch pad, you'd get these really weird cutouts and. Uh, if your launch pad or your runway had jet engines on it, the jet engines would spark inside of the VAB building or even the SPH building, which was really weird. And so I'm just going to wait until they balance that out a little bit better because I really do want to play in the 64. And also I've noticed that when I would put uh, crafts out there that were up in the Twelve to 1400 part count the choppiness of gameplay was so horrible that I really couldn't fly it compared to the older ver older older version of the game and for some reason I don't know what it is it doesn't seem like the physics is slowing down for increased part count it's just really 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 choppy and I, and I went back to my options and tried to figure it out but psh, no joy so I'm just gonna wait till they figured that out it's still brand new, so I'm sure they've got a lot of stuff to tinker and iron out, but anyway. So yes, here's the second one, the X2, and it makes orbit pretty good, pretty good. You know, put some stuff on there. I would have, I, I was thinking about putting more capsules on there, because if you notice, the, reputa the reputation went through the roof when um, I came back with three Kerbals instead of just one. But we'll just stick with the one for now. So yes, some updates real quick. If you've noticed, I've been putting out a lot of teaser trailers or teaser stuff to tease you with. <laughs> it's uh, the Polar Trek, the War is Coming for the Building with Veos videos, and the Duna 1 Part 3, which by the way, I've actually started working on. Yay! Might be a couple more weeks, because like I said, Duna 1 is a lot of very technical camera angle stuff, and I don't, I'm very, very, um, very detailed with that, so I don't want to mess anything up. And I probably will, but, you know, they'll be small and minute, but anyways. So, uh, yeah, the Polar Trek series will be coming out shortly. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to go to the North Pole, and then back again. I'm not going to try to go around the world or anything of that nature. If you want to see that, go ahead and check out Wookie's channel. He's got an actual entire series of him and a rover going around circumnavigating Kerbin. It's actually pretty cool. A uh, couple of crashes, a couple of rover replacements, redesigns, you know, traveling across the water and all sorts of good stuff. Which makes me think that if ever I try to make something like that where the rover, like let's say the South Pole. South Pole is pretty hard to get to. Uh, a lot of it's cut off by water. I might make a polar vehicle that will have like skids on the bottom and maybe a jet engine uh, near the body of the middle or something of that nature where I could go ahead and it'll be an all-in-one vehicle being able to go across the water as well as land. Should be fun. Should be fun. But anyway, so yeah. Polar treks and the War is coming building with Veos videos where I'll be building torpedoes, missiles, um, anti-missile missiles, uh, fighter jets, battleships, uh, pro perhaps battleships in sea as well as land, uh, well, a land battleship? Huh, that actually sounds kind of fun. Space, battleship, and all sorts of good stuff. Just, you know, throwing crafts out there and having fun and talking to you guys and uh, building stuff to blow up stuff. Uh, it'll be great. And of course the Duna one. So stuff to look forward to. Now right here I'm just fiddling around with moving experiments over to the capsule but it doesn't really work out all that great. Uh, well you, you learn as you go. So, And uh, I went ahead and I put three of those scientific goo machines so I could get a sample during launch, a sample in space, and a sample when I land on a different biome. You know, just try to maximize what I got. Of course, the landing wasn't too spectacular as I landed on a slope, and oh, wow! 
Luckily though, the thing's made out of titanium or something, so it doesn't blow up. And uh, I try to go ahead and get my uh, my surface or my goo sample while I'm in that new biome, and it doesn't say anything too spectacular. So I take Jebediah out, go ahead and plant a flag, and of course take a sample and an EVA report. I collect him first, and then I go back and I collect the remaining remainder of the craft. Well, ladies and gentlemen. This is it for now. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your support. Whether it be in the form of constructive criticism or kind encouragement, it all helps to make for a better viewing experience for you and also helps me to make better videos. So thank you. I am Veos, signing off.